Even the most prudent of Apple haters have to give Apple a little bit of credit when it comes to updating iOS devices. The iPhone 5S, a phone that is now five years old, is still running the most current version of iOS. That's pretty impressive. Their Mac lineup, however, doesn't get quite as much grace. This is a 2009 white MacBook. It's a killer little computer, but the most current version of macOS that's supported is macOS High Sierra, which was released in 2015. This, by all intents and purposes, is still a very capable little machine. YouTube, web browsing, word processing, not a problem, handles it in strides. The problem is, is that running a computer with an older operating system that doesn't have the latest security patches is not quite as much fun. But what if I told you you could make this old computer as new and as feature packed as a brand new one? Well, you can. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by privacy.com. Create virtual bank cards and set restrictions on your own terms. Sign up today with the link below. So how's this all possible, you ask? Well, it's all done with a very cool free utility called macOS Mojave Patcher from a guy named Colin, DOS Dude one It's a very easy download and brings computers as old as 2007 into the modern macOS Mojave era. That's as old as the original iPhone. Pretty impressive. First, you're going to want to check to see that your machine is fully compatible. There are some specific models that have a couple of issues, graphics driver issues, networking, et cetera, et cetera, but the majority of them work very, very well. So just make sure you do that before you download the patcher, but once you've ensured that, you open up the patcher, you can download macOS Mojave, either on an officially supported Mac, or even easier, directly from the patcher itself. This was super handy. Just do it on the machine you want to upgrade. And then you need to insert a USB drive. Ensure it's formatted as macOS Extended Journaled, and that's it. The patcher will flash the USB drive with a modified installer, and you're ready to rumble. So the 2009 MacBook is rocking an old school spinning hard drive, and that's the only thing that makes this otherwise pretty good computer feel kind of slow. So we're picking up an SSD instead. Turns out installing these things is really pretty easy as well. You mean to say this machine's upgradable? Yes, my friends, it is. Here's the thing. Battery life back in the good old days wasn't very good, and so Apple had removable batteries, and you could just swap it out with a new one in your bag. But because of that, they also wanted you to get inside the machine, and you could upgrade not only the SSD or the hard drive, but also the RAM by just removing one, two, three tiny little screws. And these screws are retention screws, which is super nice, so you don't have to worry about losing them. And once you pull that out, we're ready to go. The drive is very easily accessed by just pulling this tab. That's pretty easy. And the RAM is even more easily accessible. Imagine that. You just pull these little tabs, and they come right out. Super awesome. So we're gonna change this 250 gig hard drive for a one terabyte SSD. Uh, I'll be darned if that's not a pretty good upgrade. We're just gonna put this back in the chassis and it'll slide back in. Now that we've got our shiny new SSD installed, it is time to install macOS Mojave. Insert the USB drive and you can open the launcher by holding down option after you press the power button. Once you've selected the installer, it will boot into the installer and then you can install macOS normally, either a fresh install or an upgrade. You can even use APFS, which is really cool, although this is only recommended if you're running an SSD, like me. All the more reason to do the upgrade. You may think you're done yet. I mean, we're running macOS Mojave after all, but you're not quite yet. You see, these machines have drivers that are no longer included in the macOS installer. It makes sense. They're old, deprecated machines. Apple doesn't include them. But we're going to need to patch them back into the OS to make sure that everything works okay. If this sounds and smells like a Hackintosh, that's because basically it is. We're doing the same thing. We're adding Kext installers back into the OS. The difference is, is that this is way easier than a Hackintosh because we can simply boot back into the macOS Mojave installer. We can click macOS post install utility. And then all you have to do is select the model of your machine and this cool little GUI based app automatically chooses the correct patches to install. Once that's done, now it's completed. We're really running macOS Mojave. Okay, so it's one thing to run macOS Mojave, but it's a whole nother to actually run macOS Mojave well. So how does this machine fare? Actually, shockingly good. Considering that this machine originally shipped with Snow Leopard, it's amazing to see a modern OS working so well on this machine. Dark mode? Check. All the other features of Mojave? Check. And this hardware, I gotta say, it is still impressive all these years later. The keyboard is best in class. It is incredible. It is so much better, in my opinion, 
than the existing MacBook keyboards on the market, that it is truly flabbergasting. The trackpad, this is a 10 year old computer and the trackpad is still buttery smooth. No, it doesn't have a force click trackpad. Yes, there's still a button on the bottom. Right clicks are a little bit strange, but this trackpad is better than I would argue many Windows computers that are still being sold on the market today. It's amazing how good this trackpad is. MagSafe is amazing and I miss it so much on the new MacBooks. Now I love USB-C and charging over USB-C is awesome, but por que no los dos? I love both of them. IO on this computer is incredible. Sure, you know, the machine's a little bit meaty for a computer in 2019 and I do prefer the thinness of modern MacBooks, but can we just have something in the middle, you know, where I still have USB-A and HDMI? It would be very much appreciated. Last, we have the swappable battery, and this has a really cool feature wherein when you close the laptop, it saves all of your current work to the hard drive or to the SSD in this case. You can pull the entire battery out of the computer, wait several minutes, put a new battery back in, you open the computer back up, you press the power button, and it resumes exactly where it was when it left off. Very cool. No modern computers can do that, although no modern computers can pull their batteries out. And at the end of the day, I would prefer the much higher capacity, much more reliable batteries in modern MacBooks than the one in this machine. But it was a cool thing. Sure, a lot of these features may seem dated and that's because, well, they are. I'm not trading my 2018 MacBook for this thing anytime soon. However, if you already have one of these older computers and are considering upgrading and you don't do many resource intensive tasks, this may be worth an option. Conversely, if you're looking to buy a computer but don't wanna spend thousands of dollars on a new machine, maybe look for one that's a couple years old because you're probably going to be able to update them a decade down the line. Do you want $5 for free? Because this advertisement will give you $5 for free. When was the last time that ever happened? Privacy.com protects your transactions online. They allow you to generate virtual credit card numbers. So you can create burner cards that you can set spending limits on, and you can even create merchant specific credit card numbers. For example, this is one that I have with Netflix. This card has an $11 monthly spending limit and can only be charged by Netflix. Nobody else, even with the full credit card number. Try it, I dare you. They have a killer Chrome extension that generates and autofills new card numbers, and they have a great mobile apps for when you're on the go. The best part, privacy makes money from merchants, so it doesn't cost you a penny. Sign up today with my link below and get $5 towards your first secure purchase, absolutely free. Well, folks, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do, give it a like. If you didn't, well, that YouTube rewind button seems to work okay too. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.